Hi, welcome to another episode of I Can Alterix That with coaches Alex and John. I'm John. Today, we're going to cover Alterix Weekly Challenge number 229, Trend Analysis. Let's get started. All right, so this challenge, we've got a couple data sets here. Let me run this. And our goal is to create these charts as a single PowerPoint slide. So we've got to create this combo chart with actuals and predicted for each of these two data sets. So you can see the two data sets are basically the same. We've got fiscal month and a performance parameter for each of them. And we're told that we have to calculate the trend line ourselves so that we can plot it against the actuals. So if you're not familiar, a trend line is a linear regression. If you can remember back to elementary stats, if you ever took that in high school or college. And these are the calculations that allow us to plot a linear regression line. And all a linear regression line is, is a line of best fit. You can kind of see, especially on this chart on the right here, that about the same number of bars are below the line as there are above. And the magnitudes of the bars above seem to mirror that of the magnitude of the bars below. And what I mean by that is, look at this, this bar right here and the short one. The height of the bar above the line here is about the same as the height of the line below the bar there. And on the whole, they should, they'll average out to give us this line. So these calculations might look bad, but really they're not bad at all. And we'll walk through those one step at a time. So to begin, I'm just going to grab our inputs and drag them down here a bit. And so what we have to do is we're given these fiscal months, but they're not really conveniently formatted. So what I'm going to do is connect a record ID. And I'm going to do this to both of the data sets. So this record ID is going to be our X value, the horizontal values that you see in this chart above. Performance will be our Y value. And we're going to do that to both of these data sets. Then what I want to do in a little bit is union these two together so that we can perform all the calculations with one set of tools rather than duplicating everything. So to help expedite that, I'm going to create a, a field called set. And for this top one, I'm just going to call it set one. Likewise, for this down below, it's we're going to similarly create a field called set, and this one will be set2. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this browse. And we're going to grab a union tool, and we're just going to union these two together. So you can see now we have our 18 plus 18, 36 records. And you can see right here our record ID resets where set one becomes set two. And let's just make sure is performance a numeric? Yeah, performance is set to a byte. So that should be fine. So now what we have to do, if you've never done this before, I'll, I'll walk through a little more slowly than I would ordinarily. The equation of a line is simply y equals mx plus b. And, and actually in this case, you can see there's a little bar over the y and the x. Those symbols are called y bar and x bar, and all they mean is a predicted value for y and a predicted value for x. m is the slope, rise over run, of our trend line, this blue line right here, and b is the y-intercept. That's where the line would cross the y-axis if we drew it all the way to x equals zero. So the first thing that we have to do is calculate x bar and y bar. And I, um, pardon me, I misspoke a minute ago. Y bar and x bar here are the averages. And in fact, this should actually be y hat, but let's not get into too much statistical terminology. In any case, we're going to calculate x bar and y bar, which are the simple averages of the x, our record ID, and y, our performance fields. So, to that end, we're going to grab a transform tool and a summarize or from the transform palette, a summarize tool. Make sure you group by set, and we're going to take record ID and performance percentage, and we're going to calculate the average for each of those. 
So now we're going to have two records here. For set one and set two, we have our re average record ID and our performance percentage. So now what we need to do is join this information back in to the original data set. Ordinarily, I would use an append fields tool here, but because we're grouping by sets, we can actually grab a regular join. We're going to join on set, and we can go ahead and deselect our right set, and furthermore, I'm going to move set to the top. Not that that's important, but I just like the way it looks. So you can see for set one, we have our record ID, our month, our performance, and then you can see here the average record ID and average performance is the same for every record for set one, and then this is the same for every record within set two. And so with our data arranged in this manner, we can now grab a formula tool. So let's go back to our formulas. We've now calculated X bar and Y bar, average X, average Y. So now we need to go ahead and calculate our slope. And you can see here that slope is a fraction and what this is saying is we're taking for every x value that's our every record id we're subtracting from that the average record id for every y value performance percentage we're subtracting from that the average performance and we're going to take the product of those two differences for every single record in this data set so we're going to have a column for this x minus x bar we're going to have a column for y minus y bar and we're going to have a column for the product of those two things. And then we're going to sum, in the next step, those products together. You can see here in the denominator, we have x minus x bar quantity squared. So we're going to have one more column where we're going to square that difference. And likewise, we're going to sum those. And then at the end of that, we're going to take the quotient of those two sum summarizations. That sounds like a lot. I promise it's really not bad. So let's make a field, and I'm just going to call this x diff. Again, this will simply be record ID minus average record ID. Make sure we make it a double. Likewise, we're going to create y diff. This will be our performance percentage minus the average per performance percentage. Again, make it a double. I'm going to call this, oh, what should we call it? How about xy prod? This will simply be our x diff times our y diff. And finally, remember we have to square our x diff. So I'll call this x diff 2, and this will be pow x diff to the second power. Again, make sure everything is set to a double. Let's run this and see what the data frame looks like. Of course, we now have these four additional columns. So the next thing that we have to do is summarize by sum, finding the sum of this xy product and the sum of x diff 2. And that's, and of course, grouping by our, our set field. So group by set, take those last two, and we're going to do the sum of those. And you'll see now, again, we're reduced down to two records. The numerator for set one and the new and the denominator for set one, and then the same for set two. And going back to the formula, all we have to do now is one more formula tool to calculate the quotient of these two fields. And we will call this M. So this will be our xy product divided by our x diff squared. Make sure to make it a double. And you can see now we have our slope. And what this means is that for every one step along the x-axis, we would expect the performance percentage to increase for set 1 by about 0.24, and for set 2 to increase by about 0.11. So now that we've calculated our slope, we can go ahead and calculate our y-intercept. And you can see the y-intercept is nothing more than y hat, or pardon me, y bar, the average y, minus the product of the slope times x bar. But you can see that here we don't have our y bar and x bar anymore. We got rid of those when we did our summarization here. 
So what we need to do is join this data set back in in a similar vein to what we did with the join previously. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a join. And let's go back to this summarization where we have our average performance figures. And we're going to join again on set equals set. Let's deselect the right set. Run the workflow and you can see now we have our M, we have our X bar and we have our Y bar. So now for each set we can grab another formula tool and calculate the Y intercept for each. We'll call this field B, and this will be again, Y bar, so average performance percentage, minus M times X bar, which is our average record ID. Make it a double, run the workflow, and you can see now our Y intercept for B, or our Y intercept for set one is about 92, and for set two, it's about 49. And just eyeballing it, for set one and set two, that looks to be right on what they should be. So now the final step will be taking our B and our M values and using them to create predictions for Y. So to do that, what we're going to do is grab another join. And let's move, I'm going to move this down a little bit. I'm going to grab another join. And I'm going to connect all the way back to where we union the two data sets together. Oops. Again, we will be joining on set equals set, pardon me. Set equals set. I'm going to deselect the right set. Let's move some things around. So up here, our left inputs are all of the original data. And our right, well, we don't need our... Oops. We don't need the sum products. All we need is M and B at this point. And you can see when we look at this data set, we now have for every record of our initial data, we have our M and our B. So all we have to do to calculate our predicted values is yet one more formula tool, the last one. I'm going to call this predicted, and this will be, well, it's going to be the exact same formula that we just used. Oh, pardon me, y equals mx plus b. So let's take our b plus our m times our x, which is in this case record id. And we run this, and you can now see that we have our predicted values incrementing one that one number at a time because record ID is incremented in, in values of one. So we have all of our values. We have our bar values, performance percentage, and we have our line values predicted. So at this point, if we didn't have to, if the instructions didn't say to output this to a single PowerPoint slide, we could do this with one interactive chart tool. And I'll explain what I mean here in a moment. So the interactive chart tool allows you to do batch charting. So if we didn't split this, for example, let's add a layer and we'll call this actual performance. This will be a bar, X record ID, Y performance percentage. And you can see that it's adding our values for set one and set two together. What we could do is a transform and split by set. And you can see that creates side by side bars in the same chart, which is clearly not what we want. So we don't want to split. If you look down here at batch, you can actually make batch charts group by set. And you can see now we have the ability to look at each chart on individual pages. And this is fine. We could then use a layout tool to put these side by side, just like what the final product wants. However, and maybe this is just my lack of ability, I could not figure out a way to get rid of this title that says set one. You can go in here and delete it and type in other stuff, but from what I was trying, it seemed to just always show up again when I actually ran the workflow. 
So I'm not going to do this. What I'm going to do is split the data again, do the interactive chart tool for set one and for set two separately, and then reunion them. Again, if that's not the best way, I just don't know how to do it myself. So to do that, let's just grab a filter tool. We will filter where set equals set one. So let's go back into the interactive, interactive chart tool because I didn't quite finish what we have to do. If you go back to layer, so we've done our performance layer and let me just run the workflow so we can see the, the chart again. And we're gonna add another layer and I'm gonna call this predicted performance. This will be a line X again is record ID, Y in this case is our predicted. And I just remembered that on our line, they had the points showing. The bars were colored like some dark orange or something. The line was colored some shade of blue. And then there was no legend being shown. Oh, I am sorry. The the X value should not be record ID, it should be a fiscal month for both of these. And there we go. Not a big deal. So um, the chart, I don't think we need to do anything there. We're going to title the chart later. Axes, we're just going to get rid of the axes titles. And that should be all, we, oh, and the legend, we'll turn the legend off. So now all we have to do is copy and paste that and connect it to the false node of our filter. And then we're gonna reunion them right away. And you can see when we do that and run the workflow, And we now have the first chart set one and the second chart is set two. So we're almost done. We're gonna to go to the reporting tool palette and we're gonna grab a layout tool. Layout mode, we wanna do all records combined. Orientation is horizontal. And when we do that, you can see that our two records are now one and the two charts are sitting nice and pretty side by side. The original output you can see has a title called performance charts. So to add that, we'll grab a report text, put it right here in the workflow. We're gonna just go right here and this will be called performance charts. And let's make it bold. We will make it, I don't know, a size 18. Why not? We'll center it. And one more thing is we want to attach the text to an existing field. We will attach it to the layout and we're going to place it above the existing object. So when we go ahead and run it now, you'll see that the charts have a nice title above them, just like we wanted. And so on to the final step. This has been a long one, but there's been a lot to explain. We're going to grab a render tool. We want this as a PowerPoint, so we will save this as a temporary PowerPoint presentation. And that is it. We'll run the workflow. And this one tripped me up for a while. When I first started using report tools a long time ago, I didn't really know. Uh, I was always like, where do these temporary files actually go? I couldn't find them. And then I realized down here in the workflow messages, you get this link and I can click on it just like this. And you can see, there we go. Our two performance charts side by side on a single PowerPoint presentation. I know that was a lot, but there is my solution to an Alteryx Weekly Challenge number 229. Thanks for watching. As always, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Data Coach channel for more awesome lessons on Alteryx and all things data analytics and visualization. Follow Data Coach on Twitter at AskTessellation and follow me personally at jemery underscore dataviz. Thanks again.